Trailer Talk. Uh, my name is John Trent. I am Christian. And uh, I'm Joe McCormick. You'll have to guess who I'm dressed as. <laughs> oh, we, we were going to make him guess. Oh, yeah, maybe sorry. people, no, maybe people are still up. tuning in. They still okay. have to guess who I'm dressed as. Right. So I am, not I am, we are the hosts of the Stuff to Blow Your Mind podcast, a science podcast in the How Stuff Works family. This is not the Stuff to Blow Your Mind podcast. This is Stuff to Blow Your Mind trailer talk, where we come on talk about movies because that's what we like to do. And it is Halloween season. This is going to be the last Friday before Halloween. So we're in our costumes. We want to wish you all a happy Halloween, uh, and make sure you put on your masks in time for the commercial on Halloween night. Now, of course, I'm actually Robert Lamb, but I'm dressed as John Trent. I'll let you guess what movie John Trent is is from. And you I've got uh, if you can guess who I'm dressed as, leave a comment down below, yes. and, and uh, we'll give a shout out to whoever gets it right first. And actually, true stuff to blow your mind fans will recognize who you are because one of our Halloween episodes this season featured John Trent in the cover art. Did it? Yeah, you did for the uh, laughing at horror movies. Oh yes, yes, yes. Some all it was kind of alternate uh, cover art, but yeah, we did mm -hmm. promote it with that. That's right. Now, uh, of course, what are you? Uh, uh, we're gonna have are people gonna guess. This is the or, question or for the you? audience. I want the audience to decide what is my costume. All right, it's up to you. All right, so yeah, this has been our uh, this has been our Halloween uh, month of uh, seasonal offerings. We have covered laughing during horror movies, the science of it, uh, ghost stories. Uh, we've looked at uh, the science behind Stranger Things. We've uh, looked at a game of werewolf, Cambrian monster mash, optography, the first monster, and next week, our final week of Halloween offerings this year, we're gonna have cute versus monsters and creepy pasta four. That's right, all of you creepy pasta fans, the fourth iteration of those are coming soon. So. What are we going to do today? Well, we're going to look at Halloween-themed movies, of course. Yeah, we're going to look at uh, just four of them, but they're four films that take place in and around Halloween, and uh, it, it, it features at least at least one bona fide favorite and, uh, and some older films that were also uh, pretty fond of, uh, new discoveries for us. And none of these movies have Michael Myers in them. That's right. No Michael Myers. Uh, at least not officially. Not exactly correct. I will I will clarify this when we get into our first movie in a moment. Okay. So should we play our first movie trailer? Let's do it. We already played Everybody. part of it. Yeah. We've already set it up for sure. So this is, of course, the movie from 1982, Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, the best Halloween film, uh, <laughs> if you ask me. I don't know if it's the best movie in the Halloween franchise, but it is the best movie ever made by anyone. <laughs> I'm ever. partial to Halloween 5 myself. The oh. little girl in the clown costume. Man, mm. Halloween 5 is just a slog. No, it is great. absolutely painful. <laughs> like, I don't know how anybody has ever finished Halloween 5. Well, the thing about the other Halloween movies is that it's just about a crazy guy in a mask that kills people. For the most right. part, I know there's some additional flourishes here and there. But Halloween 3 has androids, it has uh, ancient child sacrifice druids, yeah. it has um, like melting Robots, faces. Yeah. yeah, they mentioned the androids oh, yeah. already. Oh, it's not even covering your ears. I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, oh, let's see, which, what else? Which one is the one where Michael Myers looks kind of like a startled Victorian butler? Is it Halloween <laughs> 4 where uh, there are scenes of him being like, oh dear. Huh, it might be H two O. He's the, got a slightly different mask every oh, time. Like maybe they left it in the car and it melted a little yeah, bit or something. <laughs> I think four is the one where he just looks a little bit like he there's been impropriety and it's oh, bothering. We've him. already got a comment coming in, guys. I think we've hit on something. Yeah. <laughs> Has anybody guessed my costume yet? Oh. Okay. Did they get it right or did they get it wrong, Nathan? You're gonna uh, find out. Yeah. Okay. Well, our friend Nathan is over here writing down comments for us. 
But, uh, yeah, if you want to leave us a question or let us know what your favorite Halloween movie is, of course, put that down in the comments. We'll try to address it live here on the air. And, uh, and if you haven't, uh, let's see. Anders asks, are you Johnny from The Shining? <laughs> Johnny, that's, yeah, I'm Jack Torrance from <laughs> The Shining. <laughs> I, I, I like Anders. Do you think the character's name is Johnny because he says, "Here's Johnny"? That's, it, it, that's is a, it is probably a rough reference for people to get. Yeah, right, because of the Carson thing. No, right, yeah, because no Carson, Carson isn't on right. anymore. Here's Jimmy Kimmel. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Joe, tell us a little bit about the director here of Halloween 3. Well, Halloween 3 was made by not John Carpenter, uh, but by a guy named Tommy Lee Wallace, who was, uh, he had worked with Carpenter on other stuff. He was a film editor, he was a screenwriter, producer. Uh, he also directed the 1990 It miniseries, not the recent It mm -hmm. movie, but the one with Tim Curry back oh, yes. in the day. We were just talking about that off air. He directed Fright Night Part 2. Mm. Uh, he directed some episodes of Max Headroom, okay. some episodes of Flipper, and at least one episode of Baywatch, but I would say his his claim to fame is Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, which is um, not a good movie, <laughs> but it is a great movie. It is very enjoyable. Yeah. For all those, ele the re all those elements we mentioned earlier are present in it, and the the soundtrack itself oh, is amazing. Legitimately awesome early 80s synth soundtrack. It takes yeah. a lot of the musical themes you hear from John Carpenter's original soundtrack to Halloween, and it reworks them, kind of slows them down, speeds them up, and layers them on top of each other for this awesome synth powerhouse. <laughs> yeah, because even though Carpenter did not write or direct this film, uh, John Carpenter, producer. well, yes, he was producer, but yeah. he and Alan Howarth actually did the, the soundtrack for it. And it's just, it's phenomenal. I hold it up as the best uh, Carpenter-produced um, soundtrack out there. It's How killer. would you feel if you were, like, out trick-or-treating on Halloween next week, and just the only little kids you saw were dressed as the these characters, the jack-o'-lantern, the skeleton, and the witch. I would be so excited it would be inappropriate. <laughs> uh, I'd probably run up at the children uh, dressed as Jack from The Shining and be like, hey, I love your costumes, and their parents would be trying to get them away from me. And you'd say, here's Johnny. Right. Yeah. Here's Jimmy Kimmel. Here's Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> uh, now, another thing about uh, director Tommy Lee Wallace here is that he was a member of the, the John Carpenter Helms supergroup, the Coupe de Villes, who performed <laughs> the, Coupe the de Villes, yes, yes, who performed the awesome Big Trouble in Little China vocal track. Not the, now the score to Big Trouble in Little China is in and of itself excellent. But they also had a vocal track that was a rock song, uh -huh. and we're looking at the oh. music video right here. Um, <laughs> Robert, I've what do you never think about seen the this? quality of this rock song? <laughs> it's it's tremendously <laughs> fun, I will say wow. that. But it, it, Carpenter's really belting it out. He's saying, uh -huh. "You got big trouble." <laughs> In well, Little they, China. They like couldn't it, come up with anything better than just the title yeah, of the movie. That's all you need. <laughs> Guys, I, sometimes I watch interviews with John Carpenter, and I wish he was my dad. <laughs> you know, we never heard the cut song from the Halloween 3 soundtrack that went, You got Halloween 3. <laughs> I know. It would, this is... There's, there needs to be a song like that for every Carpenter film. So how can we describe the plot of Halloween 3, Season of the Witch? I'm going to give it a go. Okay. You got uh, Tom Atkins, the, the famous mustache, the blonde mustache from uh, Night of the Creeps. Yeah, a roused Dowerian. Yeah. Is that the correct uh, oh, yeah. terminology? Roused Dowerian hero. Roused Dower-esque. Rad, roused Dower-esque, Yeah, yes. and he, he, there, there he is there. And he's this kind of beer-swilling surgeon, mm -hmm. and he meets up with this young lady whose father has disappeared in a town called Santa Mira. And they go to the town, and you find out it is run by the old man from RoboCop. You yes. remember the, the guy who's in charge of the board there, mm -hmm. who's, uh, who's Ronnie Cox's boss. Who's supposed to be Irish? Yeah, he's supposed to be Irish, and essentially the plot is he has taken stones from Stonehenge to harness their druid magic and make them into microchips mm -hmm. that create lasers that he puts inside of Halloween masks that he sends out to all the children of America so they will put the masks on on Halloween night when they watch a commercial for the masks they've already bought and the microchip druid magic lasers inside them turn the children's heads into crickets and snakes. You've already lost me and I've seen this movie like five times. Did I pretty much get it? <laughs> I think so. Uh, I, I think the overall though the, the basic theme is like it's core Corporate pagan child sacrifice yes. to the to the god of uh, of money. Yeah, it's Did something you get the about androids. You know, oh, there's also druid magic cybernetic androids. Yeah. Yeah. Now I think the thing is there are answers out there, and the, the, there 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 is a, a novelization of Halloween three, and I oh, have no. it right here. 
Uh, let's Does see it give us it. all the answers? It supposedly has all the answers. <laughs> I haven't read it yet, but it apparently even ties Michael Myers into the oh. Halloween 3 universe. So you might be asking, if you haven't seen Halloween 3, wait a minute, how is it a sequel to the Halloween movies if Michael Myers isn't in it? Michael Myers is the killer from the first and second movies, all the other movies. Mm -hmm. He's the startled Victorian butler in the fourth movie. Uh, he is. He does make a brief appearance in Halloween 3 as himself on a TV projection oh, of the right. movie yeah. where a character in Halloween 3 is sitting in a bar getting drunk and watching Halloween on a television. <laughs> so it takes place in a universe where ha the first Halloween is a movie. Yeah, the whole idea was Carpenter said, look, we did Halloween 1, we did Halloween 2, enough's enough, and uh -huh. I agree. Uh, let's just do this as an anthology series. Sadly, Halloween 3 did, was not a success. They didn't pick up that model. But what if they had? Yeah. I think we would be in a better world. So Halloween 3 is a bad movie, but I love it. It is brisk. <laughs> it's highly watchable. It's not scary. It's without a single believable character and all that. But it is fun, creative, mm. and genuinely weird. Yeah. Um, that lady in bed who gets her face lasered open, that's kind of gross. Oh, yeah, oh that, yeah. That does have it. Yeah. So they do that. There's like one gross gore effect in the yeah. movie. And that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my favorite recurring themes in the movie is Tom Atkins' consumption of alcohol. Yes. So Tom Atkins plays the main character, and in pretty much every scene, Atkins is just slamming some beers, mm -hmm. and it takes place in scenes that where, where that wouldn't make any sense, where he's like on the sidewalk or <laughs> at a payphone. Like he's on a payphone and it zooms out, and then he's got a six pack with him and he's slamming some beers. It's a functional alcoholic, and it's just part of the backstory. My theory is really that Tom Atkins, the actor, not his character, the actor was just continually having a few beers on set. Mm -hmm. And he was like, you know, I'm just going to bring this six or a Coors with me onto the scene. I think, it, I think it gives my character more layers. And they're like, yeah, that's cool, Tom. <laughs> wow, man, I don't know. Allegedly, I don't want Tom Atkins coming after us. Yeah. No, no, because he's a, he's a tough guy. No, customer. That, that's yeah. just my theory. Who knows if it's true? <laughs> All right, well, uh, should we move on to the next film in our uh, selection here? Well, first we should check and see, do we have any comments coming in we'd like to address? Hey, All before right. we go into the next film, where can people find Stuff to Blow Your Mind? Anywhere you get your podcast, you can find the Stuff to Blow Your Mind podcast and check out all of our Halloween episodes from this month. Uh, we, we cover all kinds of natural monsters, uh, the, the biology of creatures that you might call monstrous, the science of fear and psychology of horror. Uh, so there's tons of fun topics along those way. Fun topics. There's tons of really hard, amazing, mind-blowing stuff. We've even got a live episode in there from yeah. New York Comic Con. That's right. So check it out. StuffToBlowYourMind.com. That's the mothership. So let's head on to our next movie. This is from 1986. And it is titled Trick or Treat. Now, so th this you know is it's not the trick or treat you might be thinking of. There's an or, a few years ago. O R, right. not just the letter R. <laughs> Robert, tell me about Trick okay, or Treat. Okay, so Trick or Treat is your basic um, jocks versus metalheads film. <laughs> it is a, it is it is a part of a subgenre that I absolutely love: the metal exploitation flick. Oh yeah, a film that looks to the horror, looks to the threat posed by metal groups, generally like kind of obnoxious hair metal groups, uh, yeah. the danger they pose to America's youth. It sort of takes seriously the satanic rock music threat of the 1980s. <laughs> Which we have an episode about. We, yeah. Yeah, the satanic we've done panic. a whole episode on satanic panic. It's like these movies are made by people who didn't understand the fact that the, the rock bands of the 80s who had satanic imagery were just being funny. Yeah. Like they thought, oh, these are devil worshippers yeah. and yeah. they're yeah. going to do evil magic. And so the movies sort of take that premise, they run with it, Usually there's some kind of evil magic done, and either the members of the band turn into monsters and attack people, or they call forth some kind of monster mm -hmm. that attacks people. So I, I have not seen this movie. You guys were telling me about it, and I said, oh, it's Deathgasm, which is like a movie that's maybe two or three years old. Mm -hmm. It seems like Deathgasm just ripped off its entire premise. For <laughs> well, me. I think Deathgasm, I haven't seen Deathgasm, so I can't speak to its quality, but I understand Deathgasm was kind of a love letter to this subgenre. Okay, you know? okay. Because you have a number of films, Bla uh, Black Roses is a great one, and there are, there are a few others. Um, Rocktober Blood, Terror on <laughs> Tour. Um, like I say, it's a delightful subgenre. But this one, this one was a pretty high budget uh, ordeal, and you have a, a, you have cameos by both Ozzy Osbourne, 
a terrible cameo yeah. as a as a as a, like a, an evangelical he, televangelist type he, he character. He plays a TV preacher who's on television condemning the evils of rock music. Not believable at all. I mean, he doesn't even have like a, a southern accent. Right. He's a British guy. He, he sounds like Ozzy Osbourne. Does he wear his little like purple spectacles? No, it, no. Like they tied his hair back, yeah. uh, and it's just it's just straight up Ozzy. But it's also got a cameo by one of our least favorite people on earth, Gene Simmons. Gene Simmons shows up, and to his credit, he's. He's playing uh, the, the the disc jockey Wolfman Jack, essentially. Oh, yeah. So that's him at the beginning with the microphone? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, I uh, kind of wish I could enjoy his role <laughs> in this movie with just, like, uh, blissful naivety without knowing what kind of a red pill idiot he is. Guys, I have a question. How many times do you think on the podcast and on Trailer Talk that I've brought up Gene Simmons being on Terry Gross? I don't, I don't know, know, but that is... We've talked about it a lot. Yeah, For a kind of obvious pun, it is one of the grossest interviews I've ever heard. Yeah, if anybody wants to really learn how to hate Gene Simmons, go <laughs> Google Terry Gross Gene Simmons. Yeah, so the scene that he's in in this uh, as uh, as the disc jockey... It was really hard for me to to watch it and figure out like okay is he is he nailing this is he actually <laughs> uh, portraying a character right. who cares about another human <laughs> or uh, in or is it, is he supposed to be legitimately kind of slimy because there's a certain sliminess that kind of yeah. shines through. A know? friend of mine just wrote a comic book that was Kiss meets Vampirilla, mm -hmm. and what? I don't know how he did it. <laughs> Kiss, the band Kiss. The band Kiss. Do you all remember in the 1990s or so when there were Kiss action figures? Mm -hmm. Oh, I bet you can still get them. I bet odd, they yeah. were sculpted by Todd McFarlane. Right. <laughs> All right, well, let's talk about some of the other people involved in this film. Uh, it, it really had a number of talented people uh, involved. So you had Robert Elswit serve as cinematographer, who went on to win an Oscar for <laughs> There Will Be Blood. What? Yeah. Wait, really? What? Yeah. <laughs> wow. And that's one of the reasons the film looks pretty good. That's one of my good. favorite movies. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, directed by Charles Martin Smith, who you might remember from Never Cry Wolf, uh, and The Untouchables, in which he played the doomed accountant character that gets shot in the elevator. Oh, the little nerdy guy. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it really tons of stuff. He's in Starman. As a director, though, uh, he's done mostly TV work and the 1997 film Air Bud. <laughs> Air Bud. Yes. You know, I have been waiting for years uh, for a certain crossover of film franchises to happen. Okay. Uh, my wife and I talk about this fairly often. It needs to be the crossover between the Hellraiser franchise mm -hmm. and the Airbud franchise, <laughs> Hell Buddies. <laughs> Are you, a, are you a producer out there looking for something to do? Instead of Marley and me, it's Marley and Pinhead. Yes. <laughs> Hell Buddies. <laughs> oh, man. Hell Buddies. So let's see, who else do we have in this? Uh, Kevin Yeager did the FX, went on to do, uh, among other things, the HBO's, uh, HBO's Crypt Keeper character. Oh, mm, yeah. Okay. The music here is by the metal group Fastway. Okay. <laughs> and uh, let's see, what else? Oh, yeah, so the, the actors involved. You got uh, Mark Price as the, the lead kid here, who has kind of an Ozzy Osbourne look to him. Yeah, so he's kind of shaggy. Yeah. yeah. And, um, oh, man, there's uh, this guy, Tony Fields, plays the, this undead rocker character named Sammy Kerr. Right. And basically, I mean, he, he's great because he just puts a lot of energy into it. He's kind of this sexy goblin-looking guy. <laughs> and um, the, the whole plot has to do with this rocker, this, uh, this metal guy has died. Yeah. Uh, the teenager character worships him. And uh, there's this cursed record, the last record that he made, Songs in the Key of Death. <laughs> and, uh, and Gene Simmons' character gives him this record. Now, folks out home, at, at, out home, at home, can you guess what the kid does with the record from the dead rock star? Well, he plays it on 33.5 speed. <laughs> of course he does. <laughs> yeah, he plays it backwards, and then things begin to spiral out of control from there. Um, it's kind of a ghost film or a demon film. Um, and there, uh, oh God, there's so many wonderful elements here. You have a, a whole like tribe of evil jock characters. Yeah. <laughs> and and one of I think our favorite things here is when you have the teenagers that are all played by 30 year olds. Like right. they're all clearly yeah. like ripped 30 year olds it's playing the jocks. That 80s movie thing. Mm -hmm. it's Tormenting like a, our character. Like here. a Friday the 13th movie where all these teenagers are. Sometimes they're getting close to 40. I think that's like. still common. Yeah. I, I've been watching the Exorcist TV show lately, and all the <laughs> high school kids in that are like 25, 30. 
Yeah, and so they, they torment the kid. The kid uses the power of metal to fight back against them. But eventually, he's like, he's not metal enough for this metal ghost. What? Right. Uh, so Sammy in the movie, the evil rock star, he's got this weird ability to manipulate electricity mm -hmm. and any kind of electrical object. So he's sort of like the character Mitch Pileggi plays in the Wes Craven movie Shocker, which is one of my favorite bad I'm horror movies. Kind of half-dressed as Horace Pinker right now. Kind of, yeah. yeah. With the orange prison jumpsuit, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and the, actually this costume comes with electrodes that you can hook up to your head like you're <laughs> being electrocuted. So I wanted to point out something about this movie. Um, it comes from a time when people not only liked listening to heavy metal, but the concept of like metal identity seemed to be very important to some of them. Mm -hmm. Does that still exist? Are there still people who are like, I am a true metal head, this is who I am, death to false metal. Joe, Ramsey and I have got to take you to a couple metal shows and no, I, really, I mean, really I know, teach I, you about the life. Do you know what I'm saying, though? I'm, <laughs> there are metal fans, obviously, but yeah. people who are like, what I am is a metal person. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. I, I've definitely seen them in the wild. Yeah. Do Some they people, say death to false metal? Yes. Yeah. Do they shoot electricity out of their fingers? It's out of their eyes. <laughs> hey, do we have any metal persons watching right now? Metal persons. <laughs> <laughs> Metal Americans. If, if so, let the, us know. Uh, glad you're being inclusive. Um, <laughs> so, Guar? Oh, yeah. So the, the electrical powers of this character do kind of backfire uh, on him a little bit. There's right. one fabulous scene where he lunges in after uh, our, our heroes uh -huh. and, like, trips, as ghosts sometimes do, <laughs> and goes arm first into a toilet. Right. And then it's, like, stuck there, like, shocking himself. I'm not sure how the That's uh, like an old Spider-Man yeah. trick for beating Electro. Like, oh, yeah? You get him wet. Yeah. In a toilet. Oh, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, same vulnerability. He's vulnerable to water, and uh, and so he's shorting out in the toilet, and he, there's a great part where he tries to escape the toilet, and the, uh, the, the heroine flushes yes. the toilet to keep him stuck in it. <laughs> Not which, the drug heroin. Which no. makes, like I say, makes no sense. I have so many questions about the metaphysics involved yeah. in this movie. Right, the, the leading lady of the film. And then also, the the lead jock in this, I don't remember the actor's name, but he is played by the guy who's on Melrose Place, yep. who was the first gay kiss on television. Huh. Huh. Mm -hmm. He was also well, in Teen Wolf, by the way. Yeah. Well, he's a vicious bully in this movie. <laughs> yeah. Also, uh, uh, this movie does a thing which I did not recall from any other films of the time, which is that apparently vicious jock bullies hate metal. Mm -hmm. They, like, make fun of the kid for listening to metal, and, uh -huh. like, they find out he's got a metal cassette in his cassette player, and they kick it. Dude, you didn't grow up in the 80s like we did. That is yeah. a for real thing. Oh, oh, really? I'll say this, too. The metal kid in this, he has so many wonderful t-shirts. Like, at one point, he's wearing, I think it's alternate tentacles, which is like a... With oh, a alternative oh, yeah. tentacles. Alternative tentacles, yeah. yes. Yeah. Jello Biafra's label. Yeah, so, like, he, every scene he has a different cool t-shirt and you're like this kid like he seems pretty cool why the why is he the outcast at school i don't get it but not enough metal heads that's what that, that was the time looks mm -hmm. like we have a comment coming in in just a minute um, well while we're doing that why don't we talk about why we're talking about halloween movies because halloween's our favorite month yep we do an entire <laughs> episode of shows all Halloween related. Did you even notice that you called the month Halloween and not October? <laughs> no. Oh, there's an October? No, yeah. it's, it's Halloween as far as I'm concerned. It Halloween is, month. It is the greatest month. It's the time I break out my amazing Halloween playlist, which I'm convinced is the best in the world. <laughs> I'll go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody. Here you go. Uh, let's see here. Michelle asks, I wonder if the metal aspect of this inspired the idea of the alien guy becoming a metal... Metal lead singer in the movie Critters. Oh, oh, that's one of your favorites, right? Well, yeah, I I would love to uh, re-explore the Critters universe at some point. Uh, Do we have a monster science on Critters? I did one. Yeah, I mean, basically, it's just comparing, uh, you know, Critters to other sort of roly-poly, spiny <laughs> organisms. <laughs> right. uh, because there there are some cool parallels. The Critters, yeah. like the Krites, actually is the Krites, correct term yeah. for the organism. They can shoot their spines. They can form up into one massive super crite. They look kind of like the hairy part of an artichoke. Yeah. yeah. So do you guys think that had anything to do with how Critters played out? The whole metal... Uh, Maybe. I, I don't i got to confess something. I haven't seen Critters in many, many years. <laughs> I don't even remember the movie. I remember there are some bounty hunters Yes, yeah, space bounty hunters that can yeah. change their shape and Ooh. sometimes become sexy ladies. Okay. Uh, huh. Yeah. I, I need to see them again, too. They're all on Hulu right now, though. Really? Really? Hulu, um, membership, then jump on there and start watching some crites. Right. 
All right, so this statement was not paid for by who? Critters <laughs> and John Carpenter's Vampires. Oh, on my list for the for the weekend. All Why right. would you watch John Carpenter's <laughs> Vampires? What's the next movie? The next movie is from 1988, and it's a wonderful gem that <laughs> I was not aware of until like the last month or so because it just came out on Blu-ray, I believe. Yeah, and that is Hackle Lantern. So this is one of these <laughs> movies from the 80s that's some 80s trash that just got a really beautiful, loving re-release where mm-hmm. it's got an excellent, clear remaster. It's like, like chopping you know, mall. It must have been okay. refined through diamonds to <laughs> make it look this good. It's got new box art. Uh, there, there's another movie we were talking about recently that's like this, uh, Rawhead Rex. Yes. Uh-huh. Like just utter garbage from the <laughs> 80s that people have spent tons of time restoring and making clean for us to see again. They, I meant to tell you, they played Rawhead Rex at the local theater recently. Oh, well, yeah. good. It's uh, it's 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 a good one. You you need your you need a big uh, container to eliminate for that one. That would really. Get You're the, the one who told it. me about it. Oh God, uh, Clive Barker. Let's yeah. let's move on. So uh, <laughs> this movie, Hack O' Lantern. Robert, tell me about it. All right. So um, it's a, it's a fun film. It, it really telegraphs its twists uh, for the most part. It has a nice balance in my. Uh, in my view, of sleaze, nudity, and violence, and, uh, and some satanic horror thrown in there. It's directed by Jag Mundra, who is a, an Indian-American master of the exploitation flick. Okay. He made a, a couple of serious Indian dramas in the early to mid-80s, but then he moved on to like exclusive uh, horror and erotic thrillers. All of his movies, other than this one, like after this one, have titles like inappropriate conduct yes. or illicit behavior. And they tend to have a VHS or a DVD cover that features a scantily clad woman and half a man's face. You know the <laughs> right, type of yeah. uh, cover I'm talking about? So does this qualify as a video nasty? Uh, probably. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, that was like, there was a specific classification for that. I'm not sure that this necessarily made that list. The violence isn't too shocking in this, really. No, it's, it, I mean, it's a direct-to-video slasher with satanic elements and obviously going for the the kind of the, the lowest bar of, of titillation and amusement. It has a lot of a lot of nudity. Um, however, it has one wonderful actor in it at least, and that is High Pike. Oh man! Who plays Grant? Well, he played Kathy Lewis in Blade Runner, uh, and here and here he plays the world's creepiest satanic grandpa. Well, there he is. Yeah. He doesn't know how to do the metal horns right, <laughs> so he always does yeah, they this. Keep there saying, is. I love you in sign language. Right. And he, but he does it so hard. He does it as hard as humanly possible. <laughs> this guy is so creepy in every scene. And yet I see him described in some of the the, 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 the descriptions of this film as a kindly old grandpa, which no. he never once comes off He's as. He's a creep from frame one. And also, this guy... I don't know if you could understand what he was saying (laughs) in the movie, Robert. I tried to transcribe what it sounded like he was saying in these scenes. I got one here. How many times I gonna man you? (laughs) Hand me enough to get the pishins of Satan. (laughs) That's what people are probably thinking about me right now. Yeah, Uh, well, you you have the excuse of the mask. (laughs) This guy. Well, he's trying to do a southern accent. Yeah, like it's like he's doing this horrible, ineffective, uh, like Creole accent or something. I can't figure it out. Uh, but he's a pumpkin farmer and a Satanist, <laughs> and he ends up, um, well, and it's revealed like pretty early. Like in the first 10 minutes of the film, you find out that he had an incestual relationship with his daughter, and then so his grandson is his son, oh, okay. and this is Tommy. And so in the early portion Classic of the film. Classic conundrum. Yeah, in the early portion of the film, he gives <laughs> Tommy a pumpkin. He ends up killing Tommy's dad, and then. It, th- then we flash forward to modern day, where Tommy is this this uh, like weightlifting psychopath. Yeah, uh-huh. and, he lives uh, he lives in this cinder block basement <laughs> with uh, beer posters on the wall. Yeah, so he's who uh, is the woman who looks kind of like Olivia Dabo if she was like a meth addict? Uh, probably the mom. Yeah, okay. Tommy's okay. mom. Yeah, he's a major character. We shouldn't we shouldn't spoil the movie. There, no. There's a twist ending. We won't say what it is. Okay, okay. Well, I'm liking what I'm seeing of Tommy here. Yeah, Tommy, yeah, so he's got, behind him you might see a Killian's Irish Red Mm -hmm. logo or maybe a Coors Light logo. Uh Definitely a role model for 80s youth. Now, Tommy is played by the actor Gregory Scott Cummings, Mm -hmm. Cummings, who uh, also, he's done a lot of TV work, mostly as detectives, I think. Okay. Uh, But uh, he's been on everything, including Baywatch Nights uh, and Buffy. So, really? Okay. Yeah, he's got he's got a pedigree. But he probably sure. had like vampire makeup on. Yeah, he did. He I looked him up. He specifically played <laughs> a, a, one of those demonic vampires. Now this is one of those movies. <clears throat> why do I say one of those movies? This is the only movie I can ever remember seeing that includes within the film.
film an entire music video. Yeah, basically a, a standalone music video. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, for, for a group known as uh, DC LaCroix. No affiliation <laughs> with the uh, the excellent brand of canned water. Um, so this guy, yeah, he has this dream. Uh, he's having a, or he's listening to the song, I think, and he yeah. has a dream, which is the entire music video <laughs> of the band playing this song, uh, which includes a lady coming out who I think maybe is supposed to be kind of a collie figure. Like yeah. she has multiple arms, and then she shoots lasers at members of the band and... Uh, vaporizes them with the lasers and then kills the dude with a pitchfork. I'm yes. on board. All right. So yeah. I definitely should see this movie. Is yeah, what oh, saying. yeah, it's a tremendous amount of fun. Uh, by the way, um, DC LaCroix, you might remember them from their 1998, uh, 1988 album, Living by the Sword. Uh, <laughs> look it up because it has a fabulous uh, album cover okay, with the sword. So he, they never he, had huge Game of Thrones fans. Never had the follow up of Dying by the Sword. <laughs> no, sadly, I, I think it just was not meant to be. They did wow. not get to do a third album. Oh, also, if you watch this film, you're probably going to wonder who's that lady who's naked all the time. Uh, because there's a tremendous amount of naked, uh, a tremendous amount of nudity <laughs> in the film, and it's mostly done by one lady. That is one Gina Fine, a.k.a. Uh, Angel Rush, who was also a pornographic film star. Oh, okay. well, that would make sense. There yeah. you go. So, star uh, of the deuce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a fun flick. Uh, and, yeah, check it out, because it does have this handsome new Blu-ray release. All right, we've only got one more movie before we're going to go, so let's plug as much as we can, why we're actually here. Stuff to Blow Your Mind, a podcast that is just um, loaded with science, psychology, history, mythology, and is all about uh, exciting your curiosity and getting you to that wow point. And we spent all of October, in a little change, uh, discussing topics that had a very seasonal feel to them. Right, and if you're not familiar with who we are, this is not itself the Stuff to Blow Your Mind podcast. Mm -hmm. This is Trailer Talk, where we come on here on Facebook Live, talk about movies. If you want to hear the podcast itself, you should go wherever you get your podcasts, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, any of those platforms. Look up Stuff to Blow Your Mind. We'll pop right up, hit the subscribe button, check out all our Halloween month episodes, and uh, anything else that strikes your fancy. And hey, right. while we're talking about this last movie, I want to know what your favorite movie to watch on Halloween is. So tell us in the comments. Our buddy Nathan is over here. Mm -hmm. He will let us know, and we will reply to you in almost real time. Uh, I have to say that uh, the first Trick or Treat movie that we looked at, uh, I got the idea to rent it because I went to our local video store, Videodrome, and they had a whole selection of films that take place on or around Halloween. Nice. Uh, cool. So that's why Videodrome's the best. Yep. Videodrome they also, is the best. They also had Clown House available, which, oh. which I did not rent. Uh, it's not, not time yet for Clown House. Are we ready for the last film? Yeah, this I is feel like pick, Christian. I, it is. I feel like Halloween is ending by us watching this, but let's put it on. No, right. it's not that one. <laughs> <laughs> I think we pulled up the wrong trick or treat. It was Gene was Simmons' it? face. It, it scared me. Here oh, we here go. we go. Oh, okay. So this is the other trick or treat. This is the trick or treat that came out, what, 20... 2007? 2007, yeah. It's an anthology film. I really shouldn't be the one who explains this because I'm wearing a mask. <laughs> well, you could lift you your can, mask. You can Come this. on. Oh, it, it's permanently affixed to my <laughs> face now. It's oh. part of the curse. That's right. It's just all worms and stuff mm -hmm. behind there. Like if I know, take it off, snakes witch. will fall in your lap. So this is an anthology film, meaning it has multiple different stories within it. I don't know why I thought I needed to explain what anthology <laughs> means. It's got multiple stories. One of them uh, has, like, uh, Anna Paquin going to a, ha a Halloween party. It's got some great werewolves in it. Yeah, that's my favorite section, by the way. I have some misgivings about other portions of the film, but... Uh, I really love the, the werewolves. There's one gross section where a kid vomits up a lot of chocolate. Which is going to happen on Halloween. That's yeah. just 100% accurate. Here. Uh, That's just a fact. But there is... Uh, so one of my favorite things about this movie is simply the fact that it has Brian Cox. Yes. One of my favorite actors. Brian Cox... I, I was thinking about this the other day, and I came up with a, a schema of Brian Cox, which is that... Any movie without Brian Cox could be improved by simply adding Brian Cox to it. It's true. Like, just take any terrible movie, uh, you take uh, Rawhead Rex, and mm -hmm. you put Brian Cox in the movie, and instantly it's twice wow. as good. Yeah. Okay, I have a challenge to that. Uh, Joe, what if you found out that the next Transformers film features the voice of Brian Cox? Oh, man, you may have found the, <laughs> the, the weak point in my armor. That's actually not surprising. I mean, considering the pedigree of you know, actors with gravitas that they've gotten for those Transformers movies. What's you, the... Oh, sorry. Oh, I was going to say, do you remember the, the, the video game Manhunt? 
No. Uh, this was a, a Rockstar Games. Uh, it was it was oh, notorious. This yeah. was famous. It was one of those games that's basically like, hey, how violent could we make a video right. game? Well, one of the fun things about it was that you could plug up your headset for this, too, to make it even more uh, immersive. Brian Cox is the voice telling you to kill in that game. Really? No yeah. way. Yeah, so the whole game, you're wearing the headset, and Brian Cox is saying, do it, do it, sneak up on him, <laughs> oh, stab him. No. Yeah. Hey, well, so... That's a bummer. <laughs> I have a I have something I just learned from the website Bloody Disgusting this week about this movie. Are you guys ready to get your minds get us. blown? Tell me. This movie was originally going to have four directors. They were each going to direct one of the segments, mm -hmm. and those directors were going to be John Carpenter, okay, what? Toby Hooper, whoa, Stan Winston, okay, and then the guy who actually directed it, uh, Nick something. I forget what his name is. Yeah, but yeah, the imagine. guy went on to do, do the Krampus film. Yes, he did the Krampus movie. Yeah, huh? Yeah, that would have been a very different thing. Yeah, totally. But it didn't. It didn't work <laughs> out. Apparently, like he met with them and everything. They were on board, but it just never worked out. Now, one thing I never could get about this film is, that, like, what's the message? Is the message if you don't believe in Halloween that the the little boy character with the pumpkin on his head Sam. will come and Sam will come and kill you? Or yes. Is it sort of like a Halloween version of a Christmas Carol where yeah. there are these characters who are like, bah humbug, I don't like monsters on Halloween. Mm -hmm. And then they get visited by the ghosts of Halloween past, present, and future to yeah. punish them for their distrust. Why has no one you done that? It. Why has it you got a, it. a Halloween Carol? Oh, someone should do that. that is yeah. a good idea. Hey, hey, copyright that. <laughs> you just said right. that in public. Yeah. That is a good idea. But yeah, that's the premise of the movie. Of course it is. <laughs> what? You're making me wonder if there's something wrong with killing people on Halloween. I mean, only if they don't believe in Halloween. Only yeah. if they're, they're really uh, bah humbug about that. Then it's thing. okay. Yeah. Okay. So here's Sam, who we're talking about, who, spoilers, when you take off his canvas mask, is revealed to actually have a head that's a pumpkin. Wow. <laughs> uh, looks like we have a comment coming in. Two comments. Matt says, Cabin in the Woods is one of my faves. That's pretty great. Oh, yeah. Cabin in the Woods is great. It is great. Michelle oh, look, says, Pumpkinhead. I put Pumpkinhead on the list for today, <laughs> and we didn't choose it. I yeah. have feelings about Pumpkinhead. Yeah. In fact, years ago, before I was on the Stuff to Blow Your Mind podcast, Robert, you were asking people around the office, what are monsters that deserve better movies? Oh, yeah. Pumpkin I Head. think Pumpkinhead is one of those. Yeah. He's a Stan Winston creation, right? Stan oh, yeah. Winston made the movie Lance Pumpkinhead. Hendrickson it was like his pet project. Yeah. So, so it is the most uh, you know, painstakingly created monster you'll find from that, from that era. It's a, it's a beautiful monster design, and it's brought to life uh, fabulously. Yeah. But... It's hard to say that the rest of the picture, even the great Lance Hendrickson, uh, does not rise to the level of Pumpkinhead. Yeah, th there's Sam something... Sam is kind of like Pumpkinhead Jr. <laughs> I would say, actually, almost everything about the visual style of the film is great. Uh -huh. uh, it's not just the creature. Like The movie has great atmosphere. Uh, mm -hmm. There are a lot of great locations and stuff like that. Where it falls apart is the story. It's just mm -hmm. not... It doesn't have very compelling characters... It's kind of a hillbilly supernatural revenge film. Yeah, it's basically a, a a guy has a horrible tragedy happen to him, and he hires a witch to raise a demon that will get revenge on his behalf. True story. Last week, I tried to get my wife to watch Pumpkinhead. Yeah, she refused. But my wife is so awesome. She turned around and said, "Let's watch Trilogy of Terror with Karen Black." Oh, well, that's a good, a good compromise. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. Well, tell, let me let me ask you this, Joe. Oh, I also put that movie. Oh yeah, on Bonnie our list. says Creep Show. Creep Show yeah. is pretty great. Oh, it's Bonnie oh, that's for Bonnie. That's, his that's my wife. Yes. Yeah, Creep Show is awesome, Bonnie. Oh wait. Does that mean, I have a question for Bonnie, does that mean you're up for watching Creep Show this season? Because generally it's very hard to get you to watch a horror movie. <laughs> I'm going to take that as a yes. Uh, I especially like the Stephen King guest appearance in Creep Show yes. where he's the, what's the name of the character? Jordy Verrill, is yeah. that right? And he gets uh, it covered in plants. Yeah, uh, that's a good one. That's a great movie. It is. That, that is a fun one as well. It, well pl it plays to my deep fear of being eaten by plants. Yeah. <laughs> that's, it, well, it has, it's a... Uh, Oh, time check, 40 minutes. Yeah. All right, so we're, we're reaching the we end. we got to wrap it up. Okay, We've we'll officially been talking about horror movies for too long. <laughs> All right, so we'll have to come back and discuss <laughs> Creep Show in full on another date. We'll have to talk about Pumpkinhead. There he is. Uh, in depth on another date.
Yeah. So okay. So sorry, we got a little distracted there because we're we're watching all this stuff happening yeah. in the studio simultaneously. Yeah, because Ram- yeah, nice Ramsey, nice job. Ar- whoever said pumpkin head, <laughs> I think that was Michelle. Yeah, because Ramsey, our producer here, is bringing in images that we have not seen. But so this is yeah. many of these things. It's, Fun. It's new to us I too. like all the interaction that we're getting from the audience right yeah. now. This is great. Yeah. Hey, if you enjoy <laughs> Trailer Talk, by the way, we should give a shout out to Ramsey because what you're really enjoying is Ramsey's amazing ability to put weird stuff on the screen. Yeah. Yes, Ramsey, and yes. also. Ramsey's 40th birthday was this week. Yeah. yeah. Happy birthday, Ramsey. Congratulations, Ramsey. Yay. Oh, man. One of Jag Mudra's movies, did you see his last one, was something like Naughty at 40. I think that was his last <laughs> erotic thriller. Uh, I think I was in that. <laughs> Alternate title Unacceptable Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Unacceptable at any age yeah. by. Jack they should make. I was saying that he should just title all his films some version of R-rated movie. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everybody. Well, thank you for joining us today. Hopefully, you have a happy Halloween, and we'll potentially see you next Friday for another trailer talk. That's right. Oh, and my costume is from In the Mouth of Madness. If you didn't guess it. Thanks for joining us. Trick or treat. <laughs> Time kids, the clock is ticking. Be in front of your TV sets for the horathon and remember the big giveaway at nine. Don't miss it and don't forget to wear your masks. The clock is ticking, it's almost time. Happy, happy Halloween, Halloween, Halloween.